Welcome to the Cricket Club. I'm Stuart McGill. We're at the SCG. We're heading into day five of a big test match for Australia. Now, a lot of people tell me that uh, spin bowling is the key on day five at the SCG. And as a former spin bowler, I guess you'd probably think that I'd be one of those people uh, talking it up. But for me, uh, it's all about reverse swing and extreme pace as the pitch gets a little bit more dusty. Uh, and so what I've decided to do is get some of the greatest fast bowlers of all time for New South Wales and Australia to join me. Uh, and uh, another little friend uh, over the back there who's going to join us for a little bit of tape ball talk later on. Uh, to my left here, I've got Stuart Clark. Stewie, very nice to meet you again. <laughs> uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a while since we've been out in the middle together. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe we should sort of talk a little bit about uh, cheating. Yeah, look, look, <laughs> oh, look we, we call it, you call it cheating, but look, the reality is it is very crucial to the game. Yeah. You've got to remember, you come out and the umpire throws you one of these. And brand you get, new ball. Brand new. You get one of those. So the, the key is, that's good for about three overs. Swing, bit of bounce, bit of sideways movement, but you've got to remember the pitch is flat. Yep. Now, we have also got with us uh, Jeff Lawson, uh, another former Australian Test cricketer and uh, New South Wales captain. Henry uh, Stewie Clark's got the new ball in his hand. Should we chuck him the old ball? Well, he always looks very comfortable with the new ball in his hand, but uh, yeah, the punchman skills will be good with the old one as well. And, mate, fifth day, yeah, get, get the shine off that new ball as quick as you can and uh, uh, try scuffing it up a bit. Now, uh, Jeff, um, Stewie, I, I uh, personally think that uh, the difference between me getting hit for six and it hitting you know, row you know, 57 uh, you know, at, at the SCG and getting really, really scuffed up on the outfield, the difference between that happening and me sitting there with a little bit of, uh, well, here's one I prepared a little bit earlier, soft sandpaper and just sort of rubbing on the outside to make it uh, rough on one right. side, I don't see the difference between that. What do you think? Well, look, the key is how quickly you can get from that to that, mm -hmm. and that is roughing up one side of the cricket ball. Now you can see, obviously, the camera can actually pick it up. One side, really shiny, yep. worked hard on. But as you said, getting hit into the stand is not the worst thing on earth, because what happens is the ball gets roughed up a lot quicker. Big chunk out of one side, a little flat like that coming yep. up. That's the key to reverse swing. Now Henry can probably tell you that there's a couple of ways you can do it. Cheating, <laughs> no good. Bottle top. No good. Well, look, people, because people have used the... Uh, Been the tried. Yeah, I've tried it. People have tried that. I, I, I may have also <laughs> tried the, the sandpaper, I've got to be honest. You get rubbed out, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> That's gone. The key is, and if you watch the subcontinental teams, yes. they do it very well, throwing the ball into the ground. Okay. The, the wicketkeeper runs to the most abrasive spot, the ball comes back in on the bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Henry, what do you think about that? Is, is that should that be allowed in cricket? I mean, it, what are they doing wrong? Well, the throwing the ball on the bounce has become a, a stock standard way to, to rough a ball up and, and umpires are supposed to be cracking down on this. They're not impressed if you're 23 yards away and you keep bounce throwing it to the keeper. They reckon international cricketers have got better arms than that. So you've got to be a little bit subtle with it, especially if you hold the ball on one side and you keep throwing it sidearm. Um, yeah. so, but it is theoretically legal, doable, uh, but as I say, umpires have been told to, uh, to try and dissuade the practice. Now that's that's the semi-legal way of doing it. Um, sandpaper, bottle tops, well Magilla, you may have got away with it, a lot of people haven't. Uh, there are a lot of people in jail in Pakistan for doing that sort of stuff. <laughs> Stewie, what, what, what's the advantage of the ball going reverse? What, uh, what's the difference between reverse swing and conventional swing? Look, it goes, look, reverse swing is the, probably, it lasts for longer because conventional swing, unless the ball, it's overhead conditions and the same, 10 overs. Reverse swing can actually last for 30, 40 overs if you get it right. It also moves later. But you've got to remember on the pitch on the fifth day, there's not a lot of bounce, too paced, uh, sideways movement is just about gone. So the ball, if you can do it properly, can you can get it to come back at the stumps the whole time. And you'll also find that some bowlers can only swing it one way. If you do reverse swing properly, you can actually make it go both ways. So if one goes away and then three or four go in, the batsman's in two minds, and it's not, it's not dissimilar to a doujera mm. with the spin bowlers where, or you're wrong and yep. when you were playing, that if one goes the opposite way that you think it's going to go, 
all of a sudden there's doubt, right? So look, now, the, the, the best exponents of this uh, in the world were probably uh, Wasim Akram and Wacko Yunus. They were absolute super freaks at it. They had the benefit of playing on really abrasive wickets. Um, now, so we see that the new ball shining on both sides. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, you know, the ball will swing based on the direction of the, the seam. Yep. Um, as you scratch up one side, you know, not, not with the sandpaper, as you scratch up one side just by it yep. naturally hitting the pitch, the, the, the shiny side or the rough side gets rougher and rougher and rougher. Mm -hmm. and, and what we discovered at New South Wales is that uh, uh, fortunately, because um, there are a lot of myths about reverse swing, were there? <laughs> Fortunately, we discovered that the rougher the rough side got, the air flowing over it actually just took off. So I don't know if you've seen the ball in a wind tunnel or you know uh, uh, the, the air going over a, a wing. Um, you may have seen that. When um, the turbulence is so great over the rough side, the ball actually will start swinging in the, in the opposite direction. Now, some of the myths that we heard, Shane Warne, good friend of ours, he still, to this day, mm. thinks that you load up one side with moisture and it gets heavier. Yep. Shane, no, that doesn't happen. No, that is probably the worst thing you can possibly <laughs> do. It, look, it looks good and it feels good because it, you know, if you look at it, one side's really wet and the other one's really dry and it gives the impression that it may swing. Maybe for an over, maybe for three balls. The key is to seal one side with moisture but then rub all the moisture out. So when you see one of the batters who doesn't really partake in the bowling, standing on one knee, shine, shine, shine as hard as he can, what he's trying to do is he's trying to seal it and shine it and take all the moisture back out of it. But you get a nice smooth surface mm. and a rough surface. So then you've got the two contrasting surfaces which creates the reverse sweep. And of course, they get the batsmen to do it because they're not bowling, uh, they're not sweaty, Correct. and it's a much better thing to do. And don't forget, they don't do much else. No. Now, now, now Henry, um, if I... Um, they don't do anything else. They get all, they get all the chicks, they get all the money. I don't, what is it? All the glory. glory. We do all the work, we win the test matches. Correct. I don't understand it. Henry, uh, what's the difference between me... Uh, maybe I might have had some Vaseline and lip balm on my lip. Uh, applying spit to the ball and rubbing, uh, you know, the sun cream off my lip onto the ball to shine up one side. What's the difference? Well, uh, there's been various artificial substances tried on cricket balls since about 1875. I mean, Brill Cream was big on WGs. I like to be a reverse swing with that. Uh, so bowlers have been known to try different substances. There's no doubt about that. But it is actually legal to use perspiration and to use saliva. You are actually allowed to use that on the ball. Now, if your perspiration happens to be mixed with blockout, and it should be because slip slop slap is very important for cricketers. We don't want all those skin cancers happening. Um, a little bit of blockout I find with, with a good mixture of saliva. So if you've had a, a particularly sugary breakfast, I found that always to be useful. Uh, what do you can help get that shine up? Of course, England were famous for using their, their polo mints uh, in the 2005 to demolishing of, of the Australian batting, where reverse swing played a major part. So i got to be honest, I reckon a bit of good spit and polish was as good as anything, but the occasional artificial substance, well, it, it may have helped a little bit. That's good to hear. Now, uh, Stewie Clark has uh, another cricket club to uh, attend to. You're uh, still the boss of the six Sydney Sixers for the rest of the season. So I'm going to let you take off and get ready for the next game, mate. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. And don't forget, one side shiny, the other side throw it into the ground as much as possible. Throw it into the ground as much as possible. That's legal. Yeah. Sorry, Henry, that is legal. you just got to do it to the umpires. <laughs> Correct. You've got to talk the umpires into believing that you haven't got a bad arm. Don't go hurling one from 90 metres away flat and then from 20 metres away bounce it six times. Yeah, mine's feeling a bit stiff. Mind you, always get a game. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stuart. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, good one. Now, Henry, while we're getting rid of him, you had the benefit of uh, being involved with the uh, Pakistani cricket side. Um, I, um, I was fortunate enough to tour Pakistan in 1998. Um, they were absolutely unbelievable with this stuff. I heard a whisper that the reason they're so good is because they started with tape ball. Is that true? Well, if you, you walk around the streets of Lahore, which I used to do quite often, um, tape ball is a huge game. And uh, you've got some guys who bowl about 145, 150k with a tape ball and it swings about four feet. Um, so they do learn about 
swing bowling very early in, in, on the streets. And uh, it's that handy to take that sort of theory into the hardball game. But most cricket for, for oh, I reckon, 80% of the population in places like India and Pakistan is tape ball cricket. And, and they learn a lot of skills there and they, they, they progress on to hardball. Hardball cricket is something very special in those sort of countries because you can't afford hardball. But, but tennis balls taped up uh, a, a huge part of the education of cricketers throughout the subcontinent. And, and Australians tend to laugh at that a bit because we get access to good facilities and cricket balls of all natures. Uh, but uh, tennis ball, bit of tape on it. Um, if you can swing that, you can swing anything. Well, I've got the, uh, the benefit of uh, uh, having with us uh, today, Henry, probably the greatest exponent uh, in Australia, certainly, of tape ball, uh, my cousin, David Anderson. Uh, welcome, Dave. <laughs> That's true. We'll be able to get you out with it. <laughs> well, look, Dave, uh, Dave is very good, actually, Henry, because of the way that I used to bowl to him. Um, uh, we, uh, we, we got the tape ball. For those of you who don't know, the Australian version of tape ball involves the tennis ball and, uh, you know, your electrical tape here that I've got here, the plastic electrical tape, and you tape around half of the ball. Now, the ball, you would think would swing towards the fluff, but it doesn't. It swings towards the tape. It's really good. It goes about that far. Dave, um, can you talk about some of the, uh, well, some of the variations we used to add to tape ball? Yeah, I can, mate. I, and I remember one Christmas we, uh, we had a couple of wines and then experimented with a few different ways of taping up the tennis ball. There's a couple of tricks. I know um, uh, when, when I was bowling, you always made sure that the tape that I was taping it up with was black. But uh, when you were bowling, for some reason, the, the, the tape seemed to be the same colour as the tennis ball, which didn't make it easy for me at all. Um, I think which way it was going. Um, you know, we used to also get... Um, we, we actually tried burning the hair off the tennis ball um, one Christmas as well, just to see whether that... And then getting some sandpaper and trying to rub that off. You'd know about using sandpaper, Stu, on a yes. Russell Lennart at, at Christmas Day with the, uh, with the tennis ball. And um, we tried favorite. drilling holes in the ball. We did. We did try drilling holes. My favourite, though, Dave, was uh, short-lived because I think your mum uh, got in the way and suggested that I was being a little bit, um, a little bit cruel. I decided that it wasn't enough to get the ball just swinging. Um, I would try and add a seam on it, and I got yep. some fuse wire, and I wrapped it around the middle of the ball. Henry, you'd love this. When I sniffed Dave up and hit him in the head, it hurt. Yeah, uh, Henry. Yeah, uh, I thought of that when I was fourteen in the backyard of Wagga. <laughs> but his, his theory, Stu's theory was that I would never have any trouble facing a short ball for the rest of my short-lived career at school, and I and I didn't have any problems at all. But um, yeah, getting pinged from uh, from just a few meters with a tennis ball with fuse wire in the head was uh, was, was a lot of fun. Henry, uh, have, have, do you reckon, um, I've, I've thought about it a, a couple of times, I've spoken to John Singleton about it, we, what do you reckon we have a, a tournament in Australia, here's the tape ball, uh, half black, maybe half yellow, or as Dave said, let's well, try and... What sponsors colours, Stu, whatever the sponsor is. <laughs> there we go. Do you reckon we should have a World Series of tape ball in Australia? Well, well absolutely, and, and there are huge tape ball tournaments in India and in Pakistan where, where lots of their future first class and test players come out of. They play these tournaments very, very seriously. They have big sponsors. Some of the tape ball tournaments are on TV. So you may think it's an original idea, Stewie, but it's actually huge in those parts of the world. But, but um, you know, so many backyard games are played with the tape ball. I think you get a fairly high quality tournament. Um, and it'd be no problem getting one of the major tennis ball companies as a sponsor. Electrical companies for the tape, I, I can see this being a huge event. Jeff, do they have real fielders or are they garden beds? <laughs> oh, you get a choice, you know. If you want uh, fieldsmen like uh, some of the Sri Lankans, you get some garbage bins to substitute for them. You know, you get mobile pot plants. Pretend you can build your own backyard with all your rules. The, the, the possibilities are endless. I think, Dave, we probably have to have six and out on somewhere. One really, really short fence for the six and out. Yeah, you should be allowed to lob one, though, over the fence like you used to. <laughs> very, very good. Now, guys, uh, thank you very much. Jeff, just before I let you go, um, heading into day five, what's the perfect combination that Australia could use uh, in a bowling attack? Well, it is someone who bowls quite rapid at, at 
uh, with the old ball with, with that reverse swing. Um, there are some some laws of physics about reverse swing, and you've got to bowl a, a certain pace. And usually, it's up plus 130 k's. The quicker you bowl, it actually the more it swings. So you want someone who's going to bowl rapid, whether that's a Brett Lee or a, a Sean Tate or a Show of Akhtar. You talked about Akram and uh, and Eunice. Uh, Wacker Yunus, those sort of guys, because they bowl fast enough, are even better. So you'd have someone bowling huge reverse swing at one end, and you'd probably have a, a leg spinner, a guileful leg spinner at the other end, Stewie. So it's reverse swing plus wrist spin, and you knock over the side easily. Right. Well, in that case, Henry, I think it's probably time to dust this off and, uh, and get it back on. I'm out there. See you later. See you next time at the Cricket Club.